Before we start rigging our tentacles, we have one more object which I want to deform, and this is the antennas. So if I open this one, we'll see our objects in here. And of course, they should also react to the movement of the jellyfish. And to do this, we will use the same technique that we used up here in the brain part with our deformer. So I will open this one up, create a squash and stretch deformer, make it a child of the antenna. And before we start, uh, and your animation is maybe just uh, somewhere off, um, just rewind the timeline and hit rewind a few times that all of our um, delays are calculated and it's in the perfect start position. And now we will um, use this uh, squash and stretch deformer. So take a look from the side view and bring the deformer somewhere at the top of our antennas. Rotate them 180 degrees. And let's uh, take a look at the values. The bottom should be at zero again and the top Bring the value down till this purple line is somewhere in this area where our antennas end. This should be good. And now we can play around with the factor again. And I don't want them to be bended like this. So we can decrease the expand value. This is what causes this. So maybe we, we ex expand it a bit, something like this. This is good. So now they get stretched out very nice. This looks good to me. Um, this upper part here, the beginning of the antenna shouldn't be affected so much. So I will think we just move the deformer upwards, no downwards a bit. So that this part is not deformed that strong. So we'll take the deformer again, play around with the values and this should be okay. Um, and I think we will also go for something like 150. Yeah, this looks like a good value. So let's bring up our Expresso again. And so this part down here was the material uh, color change. And this part here was the deformer of our, of the brain part. So we will just copy this one so that uh, we can use the same values here, connect the input and just remove the squash and stretch deformer that we used earlier and bring in our new one. And also connect it to object properties factor. And the range mapper looks good from 100 to 150. Um, yeah, I will click on the memory node so that we can adjust our history, le history level. So let's go back to perspective, hit play. And the deformation really looks cool. I will make this deformer invisible so we don't have this yellow cross here. But I think a small, yeah, we should change the delay of the antenna to maybe something around nine so that it's really reacting very slow. So now we have um, some variation in the delays. And this is cool because now you have the feeling that uh, all these different parts are made of different materials. Some of them are more stiff than other ones and they are re reacting in different ways. And this gives our jellyfish a lot of detail and looks really natural and really cool. So this part is done. I will hit rewind a few times until nothing uh, changes so that all our delay calculations are done. And now we can take a look at the next part, which are our tentacles. I will make them visible, unfold it. And as I said earlier, those are just three meshes I modeled. It's the same tentacle, only scaled and a little bit modified. So I will make two of them invisible, that I can only see one. And we'll take a look from the side view again. So what I basically want to do is I want to draw a spline, which is exactly that long with a few subdivisions. And then I will use a, a spline wrap deformer to wrap my tentacle mesh onto this spline. And then we will use an effector to um, deform this spline. This will give us uh, a lot of flexibility. So I will create a linear spline which starts at this point here where it should be connected to our blob. This doesn't need to be perfect right now because we will change this one later. Something here. And the second point should be at the tip. Somewhere here. Now I want to subdivide uh, my spline a few times. To do this um, I just select all the points with Control A 
and then I type in U, which brings up this menu. You don't, uh, you're not allowed to use the mouse when you hit U because then the menu disappears again. So stop moving your mouse, type in U. And if you take a look at this list, those are just useful modeling uh, commands. And if you take a look at um, S, which means subdivide. So I'll type in S, now it's subdivided one time. And I can do this again, U, S, U, S, and maybe one more time, U, S. And now you see we have a nice subdivided spline. And now I want to create a deformer, which is a spline wrap deformer. Make it the child of our tentacle one. And in the spline field, I will drag in my spline and set the axis to minus y. So now you see everything looks good again. And if I now take my spline and go to point mode and grab one point here and pull this one out, you'll see that our tentacle is deformed very nice. So this gives us a lot of control. So now our tentacle is um, bound to the to the spline. We we wrap the mesh onto the spline, and we can start to um, deform our spline, and our tentacle will follow this movement. Um, first of all, we should go into the spline wrap and define an up vector. Um, this prevents our mesh from flipping when it's moving from the left to the right. So just type in an up vector, maybe in the Z axis, and just type in one. So this uh, should fix any problems. And now we can use an effector as a deformer. So just go on MoGraph, effector, and we'll take the formula effector. If you click on the formula effector, you can go to the deformer tab and set the deformation to point, which means we can now use this uh, formula effector, which gives us a nice movement, and use this one like a deformer on our spline. So we just make it a child of our spline. And if we now hit play, uh, we'll see that something's happening here, but it's in the wrong axis. So go on parameter, disable scale, and maybe type in 5 in the Z axis. And now you see we have a nice curvy movement here. And it should go into the other direction. So we go on effector. And here uh, unfold the variables. Scroll down and then we have here the project time. And if you bring the slider to a negative value. Uh, the So now it goes into the right direction. This is how it was earlier. And we want to go in a negative direction direction not too fast maybe something like this or maybe a bit more this looks cool and the last uh, thing i want to do is i don't want this top part here to move so this part here should be fixed to this point and only uh, the part down here should move so i will go into the formula factor fall off and set this one to linear and now i need to define my fall off, I will set it to 10 centimeters, something like this, and put the fall off to 100%, that we have a fall off between here and here, and then we rotate it 90 degrees, and now other direction, upwards, and just move it down, that the yellow line is at the beginning of our, and you see if I move it down, everything which is above this yellow line is not affected, so I will move it to somewhere here. So we have a nice movement, but the top part is uh, fixed in this position. So this is very, very good. So now we can do the same with our uh, other two tentacles. So I will blend in the second one, which is way shorter. Let's uh, disable the first one, but we can see it very good. We will create a spline. Start somewhere here. Go to the bottom, create another one, subdivide it a few times, like this, and I will just create the third one also, make this one visible, draw a spline, which starts here and goes to the tip. and subdivide it like this. Now we have our three splines and we want three spline wraps. So I can copy this one and bring it in here. And our second one should have the second spline 
in the field. And the third one should have the third spline in here. So now all our splines are uh, wrapped onto the um, spline objects up here. And of course we also want to copy the formula effector into uh, those three. And if I now hit play, you see that we have a beautiful motion in here. It looks really, really nice. And we can go into the formula effectors and just change the speed or the amount, the parameters of how it is um, deformed. Maybe give it a little bit uh, deformation also in X. Something like this. Maybe only four here. And just maybe different speeds. I will, I will just change them a little bit. Something like this. And now we have a beautiful motion in our tentacles. So this looks really, really nice. So in the next step, we will create one master spline where all our moving tentacles are bound to. So I will go to the perspective view again and just leave this camera that you can see them. So it really looks super cool. Maybe we should rotate some of them. Oh no, actually the movement is very nice. And it will give us a lot of... Um, a lot of natural, um, yeah, it will look more natural with this one and really beautiful movement. So I will see you in the next lesson where we create our master spline.